I know it's rigorous and I've chosen a career path and the travel that can make it difficult. But I say, I never get away from this. It's a progressive disease. It's going to get worse. There's nothing we can do. There's no treatment. There's no cure. I want, when I get on the air, though, that day, that no one knows about anything about me from that standpoint, if they're just looking to hear the game and enjoy it. And, you know, you just, you get it done. Typical game night routine for the radio voice of the Brooklyn Nets. Chris Carino driving up the Jersey Turnpike across Staten Island. I always loved when you come over this bridge, you see all the way from the whole across Brooklyn. Over the Verrazano Bridge and into Brooklyn. I married a Brooklyn girl, so I know how important it is that when you're from Brooklyn, you're always from Brooklyn. The Nets will play the Orlando Magic tonight, and Chris Carino will be where he always dreamed as a kid growing up in Yonkers, behind the mic, play-by-play -play man of a New York pro basketball team. This is his 15th season on the call. Chris Carino and Tim Capps draw back with you here at Barclays Center off the corner of Flatbush and Atlantic in Brooklyn as we get set to see if the Nets can get the victory. They're 10 and 25 on the year. He is a student of the craft. You know he's going to bring his A game every single night. He cares about the product. He cares about radio play-by-play. And because of that, the listeners benefit. Robinson spinning foul line jumper is good at the horn. These jobs are competitive, hard to get, and sometimes even harder to keep in a business that can often be cutthroat. Across all these years, Carino has managed to keep his seat on the air. But night after night, getting back to that seat can sometimes be the most arduous task of all. I always have to be careful when I'm walking, because if I misstep, I may stumble and then fall. I've had stitches to my chin on more than one occasion. Chris Carino is one of 25,000 Americans afflicted with fascio-scapulo-humeral dystrophy, a progressive and debilitating disease with no treatment and no cure. FSHD attacks and weakens muscles in the face, shoulders, and upper arms. Eventually, it can spread elsewhere in the body. Chris is 45 years old, and FSHD began its assault on him as an upperclassman at Fordham University in the late 1980s. What was happening physically that made you think you needed to go see a doctor? I was very active in sports, and I just started realizing I couldn't do the same things athletically. You know, you, you try running the bases. I was like, all of a sudden, it was like running in sand. I just went to an HMO doctor. He says, well, you, you definitely have some kind of a, of a muscular dystrophy. I says, that, you know, that's like the Jerry Lewis telethon, the kids in wheelchairs. He says, yeah, well, there's... There's various forms of muscular dystrophy. Not a lot of doctors know about FSHD. It's five minutes at medical school. You know, it's, it's a half a page in a medical journal. The Nets lose their ninth consecutive home game, and the Magic went at 83 to 77. After the game, it's a drive back through the city to meet a charter plane at Newark International Airport. For the team and its traveling party, this is a standard fare hour flight to Michigan for a back-to-back -back game tomorrow against the Detroit Pistons. For Chris Carino, no journey, long or short, comes without uncertainty looming every step of the way. We sit in the back of the plane. I'm the last one off. I, I, a lot of people don't even see what I go through uh, that are part of the traveling group. When it's 2, 3 in the morning and you're tired, that's when you really have to be careful. On a cold, rainy night out on the road, Carino finds a familiar shoulder to lean on. I'm much like a caddy, you know? I, I carry his bags. I check out the surface. I make sure everything is OK. To, for him, you know, to get, get, get to the next place or the next hole and, and the next spot. Tim Capstraw has been far more than Carino's radio broadcast partner for the past 14 years. Capstraw has become a bedrock of Chris's life. Mike Breen said to us last year, he said, you're like an old married couple, you know, and, and you know, different people say that to you, that you kind of finish sentences. Tim has become, you know, one of my best friends. Even off the air, when we're on the road, we're having lunch together, we're having dinner together, we're always together. It's just because we enjoy each other's company. 
Tim is one of the, the most humble, um, selfless people you're ever going to meet in your life. Does everybody feel this tired at the end of the night? Or is it, you know, am I any different from anybody else? Um, you know, I, I, I just feel tired. And, you know, luckily what I go through, it, it's not a lot, it's not pain, it's just some weakness. But we'll get up and we'll do it all again tomorrow. Another day, another city on the unforgiving NBA travel grind. There's no missing Chris on the team bus to the arena. He elevates on a specially made seat, looming above even the seven footers settled in the rows behind him. The device offers him an easier way in and out of his seat. Your relationship with your wife, Laura, was she the one person you did confide in your struggles, what you were going with before you went outside? What were the conversations you two had? So Laura met me, I already was in my early 30s and um, I had already been diagnosed. So she only knows me with FSHD. But I was never really forthcoming about my emotions about it and feeling with anybody. I didn't want people to worry about me. She started, I think, getting frustrated with me that I wasn't sharing it. And a good evening. We welcome you to the Palace in Auburn Hills, Michigan, as the Nets will look to bounce back in the second of a back-to-back -back as they take on the Detroit Pistons. What was the toll it would take on you as his partner? When you love someone, you, know, you just pretty much do what's needed to be done. You know, some days it was hard, but, you know... <laughs> She's a strong woman. But, it, that, but that's what I, mean, what I mean by it really, um, that burden of, of living with the disease and at the same time, the other burden you create for yourself by trying to hide it and pretend it doesn't exist. From every corner of his personal and professional life, support would wash over Carino. But none touch him as deeply as the way this life turn has connected him to his boy, Christopher Jr. When Chris talks uh, about FSHD, obviously when he talks about his son, it's the biggest, kind of hits me, everybody, you know, in a difficult, you know, a tough way. We go to a ball game or something, he's always, he's always kind of looking out for me. I don't want him to bump into you, or, you know, are we going to sit someplace? You're going to be all right when we sit here. You know, like he's he's always looking out, and I, and part of me just hates the fact that he's got to worry about that and that he's got to know about that stuff. But he's growing up as just a, a wonderful young man. Research shows that there's a 50% chance a parent with FSHD will pass it down to their child. He will ask me from time to time, you know, mommy, do you think I have FSHD? But we have a great pediatrician who is very familiar with FSHD and she monitors Christopher over the years, and she doesn't think he has it, but one day we will give him a blood test and he, we will find out, definitely. If there was something we can do, if there was a treatment, then obviously it would behoove us to get him tested so that we could start the treatment. But if there's nothing that can be done for him right now, then let's let him be, you know, not have that label right now until, you know, cross that bridge when we have to cross that bridge. On top to Jackson, dribble drive into the paint, and shot swatted away by Lopez out of bounds. There was a moment, it was a tipping point. It was in the diner. We were having breakfast that morning. Oh, and we were sitting in a booth. And it took him about 15 minutes to get out of the booth that day. And I got really upset. So when we came home, I said, it's time. It's time for you to acknowledge what's going on. You made a name in the media for yourself. And I think this is the perfect time for you to now start a foundation. I appreciate you guys for being here. You're all invited back next year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 
as you can see uh, by these numbers we have, the number five that we have up here, this is our fifth annual event. Five years ago, Chris and Laura Carino started the Chris Carino Foundation for FSHD, a nonprofit that has generated hundreds of thousands of dollars to fund research in universities and clinics around the country and world. Your son, Chris Jr., he's been part of this whole process with you. Uh, you see him at the fundraising dinner every year, yeah. playing a role that he's learning some values uh, of giving and, and being selfless through this process you're going through. When he's at that foundation dinner, he wants to be such a help. He wants to go out and he shakes down so many people for money and sells hats or shirts or whatever it is, or raffle tickets. And he really takes pride in being a part of it. I was getting ready to shoot a promotional video for our first dinner. When he comes, you know, bopping in, he's like, you know, if, if I have muscular dystrophy one day, it's not, it's not gonna really matter. I, I'm not, it's not really gonna be like I have it because there'll be a cure from your foundation. And I mean, I was like, I mean, that was, that blew me away. The Carino Foundation has raised over a half million dollars for research. What's more, one of the foundation's grants sparked a promising breakthrough in the search for a cure. A $125,000 earmark to Dr. Peter Jones and his research team at the University of Massachusetts. Jones had run dry of funding until he was connected with the Carino Foundation. They took a chance on us. This was a lifeline to this mouse project. We saw what the turtle was that everybody had been kind of missing. And this mouse is spectacular. It, we are able to recapitulate um, many of the aspects of FSHD. If you're early diagnosed, you know, slowing it down, if you could give somebody 10 more years before they perf maybe have to be uh, wheelchair bound, for example, that would be a big deal. It's quality of life. And I do believe that um, we will have that um, type of therapy um, within the near future. Every time Chris's name comes up or the Carino um, Foundation comes up, we just think, boy, you know, they saved us. They st and that is the, the truth, is that this project could have died without this mouse getting going, without that investment and their faith that, um, in us that, that we knew what we were doing. The foundation partnered with St. Louis University on a social media campaign called Dance and Donate. This time, it was Nets players Brooke Lopez and Rondé Hollis Jefferson delivering for the Carino cause. <laughs> It's really teamwork, and that's what we're all about. Uh, you know, Rodney is a rookie, so we're trying to initiate a new our group, show them what we're all about. The bottom line, we've got to be there for each other, we got to trust in each other, and I felt like we uh, absolutely did a uh, fantastic job, spectacular job of that in this video. <laughs> and the Pistons defeat the Nets here in Auburn Hills, the final Detroit 103, the Nets 89. If it really became so much of a burden to other people, that's when I'd have to stop. But we're in a race against time with this, and I think a lot of the things we're trying to do with the foundation is finding treatments, finding cures. I just think that by the time it gets to a point where I wouldn't be able to do it again, there's gonna be something that's gonna help me. We're truthful when we say we're in this together. When we meet with the people at Chris's um, fundraisers and these families, we, as researchers, we can't do it without the foundations. We're all doing this together. Is he a little bit worse than he was 10 years ago? I guess, but his, I think his attitude is better. His will is better. It goes beyond what your physical abilities are or whatever. It's your will. It's your will. How determined are you? It's inspiring. It really is. You know, um, it's such a fantastic story. And, uh, you know, he's obviously doing what he loves, regardless of what's in his way. I'd be climbing that staircase and struggling with it up to the plane and going, ah, you know, I, I want to do this job till I'm 80 years old, but how am I possibly going to do this every, you know, in 10 years, in 20 years? But I said to myself, I don't have to do it 10 years from now, right now. Right now, I just have to get up this staircase that's in front of me. You talk about living your life moment to moment. I mean, I think that's what FSHD 
It's a lesson that it's kind of taught me to do. I, I don't worry about how I'm going to get to tomorrow's game. I just worry about today and what I have to do today. Thank you.